Everyone was wondering, would she turn up? The mother, who served the deadly mushroom lunch, to the memorial service for two of the victims. Erin Patterson was nowhere to be seen, but her ex-husband Simon had plenty to say as he farewelled his parents. They would always wave goodbye and they parted ways. It's partly because one day would be the last wave. As mum and dad lay in comas in the Austin hospital in their final days, and each day we were unsure whether they would recover or not, it was comforting to know that when we said, see you later, we knew it was true. They were born two months apart and died within a day of each other. Don and Gail Patterson farewelled by those who loved them most. There's no fluke that mum's final text message on our family group chat as she lay in Dandenong Hospital was, lots of love to you all. It's the first time we've heard from Simon Patterson, whose parents, Gail and Don, and Aunt Heather died. Simon's uncle, Reverend Ian Wilkinson, remains in hospital. The tiny Victorian communities of Leangatha and Currumbara, torn apart by tragedy, united in grief. Welcome everyone to this big occasion on a beautiful Currumburra day. <laughs> Don and Gail Patterson weren't only pillars of this community, their church and the local school where they worked, they touched lives around the world, from Botswana to China, where they mentored young people and even taught English. Mum's SMS notification sound was from the song, War, ha, huh, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. That's what happened every time there was an SMS on Mum's phone. Simon also paying tribute to hospital staff. The overtime work their team did. Just to let Mum visit Dad one last time before he was shipped off to ICU. That was amazing. While hundreds turned out to pay their respects today, there was one person missing. The woman who cooked the lethal lunch. That was just over a month ago. While she hasn't been charged, Erin Patterson was named as a suspect because police say she prepared the poisonous meal. And we can reveal she's since visited her Melbourne lawyer at least three times in recent weeks. Despite initially speaking with a current affair, Erin's remained tight-lipped since. I'm so <laughs> devastated by what's happened, by the loss of Don and... Don is still in hospital, the loss of Ian and Heather and Gail. We can tell you, though, she claims to have given authorities a sample of her leftover beef wellington, which she says she retrieved from the bin. Whatever the outcome, whatever the reasons for somebody being thrust into the spotlight, it's going to put them under intense pressure, ultimately, psychologically and emotionally, because it, we don't really have a baseline to understand, for example, Erin Patterson's body language would normally be. Criminologist Dr Zanthi Mallet says the discarded food dehydrator found by police at a local tip could be the most critical clue in the mushroom meal mystery. Erin Patterson has stated that she got rid of that because she was nervous after a comment that her ex-husband made at the hospital and that kind of made her get rid of it through fear that she would be suspected. In a statement prepared by Erin Patterson's lawyer and sent to police, she claims her ex Simon asked her, Is that what you used to poison them? The big question is, are there spores of death cap mushrooms in that dehydrator? That's really at the heart of this. Forensic toxicologist Dr Michael Robertson is regularly called upon to provide evidence in court cases. He says for the death caps toxin to be identified in the victim's bodies, blood and urine samples would need to have been taken soon after ingestion. It's probably uh, gone within 12 hours from the bloodstream. So by the time they've, they've died, then the toxin's gone. 
He says because mushroom poisoning is so rare, police may have had to import a lab sample from overseas. Then, he says, toxicologists would need to establish a testing method. That might take two, three, four weeks just getting the method analysis up and going um, before they can even test the samples. For now, the focus is on healing, but with so few answers, it's something that's barely begun. The hope of see you later, that was their hope, and it's ours. And in the meantime, we'll miss them. Beautiful tribute there from Simon and it must have been incredibly tough for him.